Layla, please tell my story. I met my boyfriend when I was 20. I was young, carefree, and I didn't really know what a relationship should be. I went with the flow, I fell in love, and the expectations followed. I spent my childhood watching my mum be abused, terrified of the screams and cries I'd hear, and many times were spent in safe houses. We even survived her abuser trying to kill us. I should have seen the red flags from early on, the telltale signs, the snippets of mental manipulation that I'd already received in my childhood years, but my need for the dream man made me blind to all of these. Within 10 months, I had my first black eye because I dared to question why he was with another woman in a club. He blamed me for his behaviour and I blamed myself too. It was my fault he had done this. I shouldn't have questioned him. The next two years were followed by isolation from my friends and family. He wanted to be the only person that I needed in my life. I believed that he was my protector, my armour against harm and that he loved me. It didn't matter how many times other people told me that he was bad I just couldn't see it for myself. The cheating and secrecy started first. I grew insecure and paranoid and started to question who he was talking to and messaging. But he would just tell me it was all in my head. I was mental and crazy for ever thinking that he could look at another girl. The more I questioned him, the worse it got. His favourite thing to do was to spit in my face. He would pin me down for this. He wouldn't feel the full effect unless he was millimetres away from my face whilst he was doing it. I would cry and say that I miss my family and he would just say, you don't need them, you have me. Or if you ever think of seeing them again, you'll never see me. He'd often tell me that he had dreams of me leaving him and so he would tie me up and lock me in the flat. I felt like my mind wasn't mine anymore, but in a strange way, I accepted it and gave in to him. He controlled my thinking, manipulated my feelings and beat down any self-worth that I had left. I always questioned my own sanity. I'd get messages from other girls telling me that he'd slept with them, but of course, he'd say that they were lying and insane. He would always say things like, do you ever think I'd cheat on you? God, you don't know me at all. Eventually, I just started to believe that I was paranoid. When I was curvy, he'd say that I was getting fat. When I lost seven and a half stone, he told me that I looked disgusting and I was too skinny. I started to make new friends and they soon became my rock and escape in difficult times. I thought that it would get better once I was pregnant and that having a baby would change him and stop the abuse, but I was wrong. Instead, he made me suffer more mentally, emotionally and physically. Throughout my pregnancy, I was spat on, strangled, pushed to the floor, pushed out of a moving car. I had my head cut open and my hair pulled to the ground and dragged across the floor. I was told that I was disgusting, ugly and fat. I was a nervous wreck and I thought that I would lose my baby. I knew whatever happened, I could not allow my child to be raised in a home like this. But it wasn't easy as that. I couldn't be free. His hold on me was far too tight. I loved him and hated him all at the same time. After a painful C-section, he wasn't at home to help me. I did everything by myself and I made myself sick because of it. I had to be readmitted to hospital with septicemia. I came home from the hospital and he went off again for the weekend. The cheating didn't stop and I had proof of all of it. My mind was a complete mess. Confronting him only resulted in me getting more abuse with him strangling me whilst our newborn son lay in the other room. I secretly called the police and they arrived within minutes. He lied and told them that everything was fine but they could see from the marks on my neck so they removed me and my son from the home for my own safety. And it became a regular occurrence for me to come home and find that he'd hidden my things under the bed whilst there was girl's hair and lipstick stains all over my house. Eventually, when my son was seven months old, I left. I found myself a flat and I packed up whilst he was at work. I felt amazing for the first few weeks. He would call and beg me to do relationship counselling. He said he'd change and he'd saw himself out. And I started to miss him so I stupidly caved. Of course, relationship counselling didn't work. When the counsellor wanted him to listen to me, he couldn't do it. According to him, the counsellor wasn't doing his job right. I spent the next four years being controlled and abused by him. I didn't let him move into my flat though, but he would stay with me a lot. I guess I knew deep down that things would have been a lot more worse if I did. I couldn't post anything on social media with him in it. I got questioned every single time he found out that I'd gone clubbing. He'd say things like, I've had loads of my friends tell me how you act in a club. I don't want my baby mum acting like that. It wasn't true in the slightest. In fact, I was reserved on nights out. 
scared that he'd see me, but he knew by saying this to me that I would eventually stop altogether. My neighbours would often intervene when they heard him screaming at me, but he never seemed to care at all about his behaviour. Every time I told him I wanted to leave, he would tell me that no one would want a single mum like me and that I'm lucky to have him. I was repeatedly told that I was mental, insane, and that I should be sectioned. He took all of my money every single month. Once, he spent a whole car journey on the way to the bank laughing at me, telling me that I was a no one. I sat there silently until I couldn't take any more and I just screamed as loud as I could for what felt like forever. He grabbed my hair and pulled my head down to the handbrake saying, how dare you do that with our son in the back? Then he just laughed at me because I was crying. Whilst he was in prison, I found out that he'd been involved with another woman. He swore to me that she was no one and that we were going to be a proper family when he came out. But as he served his sentence, I slowly gained my confidence back. My son and I were happy and I knew I couldn't be with him anymore. I didn't want to be. I experienced freedom and I loved it. I thought moving on was going to be easy, but he wasn't going to let me go without a fight. I tried to leave. I was desperate but I somehow fell into his trap again. And whenever I moved on with someone else, he would attack me by punching me in the stomach, dragging me across the floor and spitting in my face. And then he'd threaten the other man that I was dating. How on earth was I ever going to be free of him? To him, I couldn't be with anyone else because I had his son. He would even use suicide threats and attempts to get me back. He turned his phone off purposely to make me worry for his welfare. And it often worked. All the while, though, he was off living a double life with another woman who he'd also had a baby with. I knew, though, that he was abusing her too. After I left for the final time and I met my current partner, he immediately started the cycle of violence again by banging my door down, screaming through the letterbox, threats to kill me and threats to slash my partner's throat. I had panic alarms fitted in my home. I went to the police and he was arrested, found guilty and I got a two-year injunction against him. The police told me that this was over the scale for domestic abuse and one of the worst cases they'd heard. I spent 10 years of my life being mentally and physically abused by him and I thought it was normal. But finally, I felt like I could start breathing again. Everything he did to me was premeditated. As if abusing me wasn't enough, he was also creating a hate campaign against me to get his friends and family on side. I was the insane one. I was the one stopping him from seeing our son. I was vile, horrible and abusive. The physical abuse was bad, but the mental scars it's left me with are worse. He didn't show any remorse for anything he'd ever done. I lost my family, my friends. He kept me a prisoner. He emotionally damaged every part of me. I have no doubt that his abuse towards others, whether mentally or physically, will only continue to get worse. I found it hard to trust and hard to love my body and believe in myself. I had no self-worth and confidence left, but my current partner has been patient and worked with me to help overcome my insecurities and battles. I'm not 100% there yet, and maybe I'll never be, but I will always try. When my son was old enough, he decided for himself that he didn't want to see his dad anymore. He suffers badly with anxiety and he was a big trigger for him, but I had to let him make the decision for himself. My son is getting help now and hopefully in time he will be able to overcome it. The other woman in his life reached out to me and it turned out she had, just like I thought, endured the same abuse. I knew I'd always be there for her when she was ready to leave. After all, we were survivors together. We might have connected through a reign of horror but we understand each other's pains and for that our hearts will always be one. We became friends and I supported her when she finally left him. We both still have things that might trigger our memories, but we have each other to get through it. And our sons have a loving relationship because of our solidarity. I'm engaged now to a man who loves me for me and we have a child together. I'm surrounded by family and friends that I was once forbidden to have contact with. And my life is so far from the horror it previously was. And this to me is happiness. So please, ladies, don't ignore red flags. Please get help and get out. Please show other victims and survivors the same compassion that I did.